Today I'm going to be turning random things into pool floats using Adobe Illustrator's new 3D tools. Now, you might ask why am I doing this? And the answer is why not? I love playing out with these new tools that they added. You can basically turn any shape that you draw into a 3D object that looks super cool. So I thought I'd have fun playing around with this new feature and ask you all which objects you want me to make into pool floats. If you're new here, I'm Tyler, AKA Tylee Talk. And on this channel, I design and redesign logos as well as create my own digital art. So if that's something you're into, feel free to give us a subscribe. I also put up prompts like this on my community tab pretty regularly and I go live once a week. So if you wanna see your name, your ideas in a future video, then definitely check those out as well. Before I get started, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Holly Johnson on TikTok, who actually has a lot of digital art on there. And that's actually the first place I saw some of these tutorials on how to use these new 3D tools. And it definitely inspired me to start making these videos. I'll link her down below in the comments and definitely check her TikTok out. Now, onto the creations and your all suggestions. First, I really just wanted to play around with this and start experimenting with what kinds of shapes do what. I saw my cat sitting on the back of my computer and I snapped a quick photo and I decided to make that into the first pool float. So the way that this 3D tool works is you basically take this flat vector image and inflate it and it adds that 3D effect. So you have to start by either drawing your own vector or turning an existing drawing or logo into one. So for this first one, I drew it with the pen tool. I wasn't sure exactly how layering shapes of the same color would look with the 3D tool. So I experimented by trying to draw a couple different shapes like his tail and his mouth as different pieces. But as you'll see, when you hit that inflate, I think it really just picks up one color mass and inflates that whole thing. So there's not really differentiations in between the different shapes. So once I was happy with how the drawing looked, I grouped all the shapes together and grabbed the 3D and materials panel. I selected inflate and selected inflate on both sides. And this is like that newest feature that they added that I really think gives it that pool float effect that Holly actually pointed out in one of her recent videos. The thing about these 3D pieces that are a little frustrating are how long they take to render. So in order to kind of bypass this in the top right corner of this panel, make sure that real time preview button isn't selected until you wanna see the final result. So the depth slider is how tall your walls of the object are going to be. And the volume is how puffed up the surface will be. So I played around with those to get it to how I wanted it to look and make sure to turn roughness all the way down in this roughness panel. And that's gonna give you those really clean highlights. Uh, so I selected the view to be isometric top and this gives it a really cool top down view. And you can also adjust the angles from there and kind of just play around with how you want that 3D object to look in the space. I also played around with the lighting and you can also give it a shadow if you want, but I like to do that in Photoshop because you can actually have a little bit more things to play with to make it look a little more realistic than in this 3D space. You just have to make sure that your shadows align when you put it into Photoshop, but I'll talk about that later. So once I was happy with everything, I turned on the real-time preview and waited for it to render and I got this. And this is when you can really start to see how the lighting is gonna look and have those really cool highlights and shadows. Um, but you can also see here if you wanna make any tweaks to the lighting. So like for instance, I went back and I tweaked the lighting a little bit because I wanted there to be more of those highlights. And really this is just about playing with it until you get it to look the way that you want it to. And I also thought that his belly area looked a little weird in the way that I designed it. So I cleaned that up a little bit and this is the final result with that one. I really like how this turned out, but there's definitely a few tweaks that I wanted to make in future ones to get the outline right. I think this was a great start, um, but I definitely learned a couple things along the way that I think made the next ones a little better. One of my followers suggested doing a rug or a chair and I wasn't sure how I could do a rug. So I decided to go with the chair. The other thing about this tool is the shapes more or less seem to be flat or played around with a ton to get them in the exact position to make something truly look 3D. But since it's a pool float, it should be flat anyway. So that's not a problem here. Um, so I decided to make a front facing view of what a chair would look like, but still make it kind of that flat shape. I knew I needed to experiment with making one color have different depths. So I experimented with giving the shapes a stroke and that did exactly what I was hoping it would. So I drew out the chair with the pen tool. Another really cool thing about this feature is once you have one object in the style you like, in the layers panel, you can hold option and drag this little button dot 
appearance dots thing up to your new drawing and it'll apply the same lighting placement and everything as the past one. So I did that for this one. I tweaked it a little bit so that they don't all look identical. And I love how this one turned out. It definitely gave me some inspiration for the next couple. Someone suggested the IBM logo, which was random, but that is exactly what I asked for. So for flat logos and existing images like that, you can actually turn them into vectors pretty easily in Illustrator. So you get the image trace panel, select color and hit trace. And then you go to object image trace expand. And then you can just delete any of the parts that it created in there that you don't want. So like this one had a white background, for instance, I deleted that. Um, but with this one, I really did learn that sharp edges don't really go away when you make it 3D. Like even no, no matter how much you bubble it, it still has those hard edges. So this one did look a little less pool floaty than the other ones, but I went ahead and added this white outline around all the letters and I think that definitely helped it. Someone also suggested doing the old Instagram logo, which I thought was fun. Unfortunately, if something is already in 3D, when you do the image trace method, it makes these like tiny selections of every single color, including the shadows and highlights. So for this one, I had to recreate the logo from scratch using flat shapes. So a fun trick for this that I used is that you can use the Pathfinder tool and use this divide button. And that way, if you have overlapping shapes, wherever the lines connect and like intersect with each other, it'll cut all the shapes there and you can just delete the parts that you don't want. So I decided to add these rings to the camera lens and to the little lens thingy in the top right. And here's how that one looks all rendered. After seeing this, I think that Meta actually could benefit from using the old Instagram in merch, like on a t-shirt or this pool floaty, for example, because it really feels already like vintage and nostalgic at this point to see the old logo. And it looks really cool in a kind of merch setting like this. Someone also suggested doing the Spotify logo. So I created that vector using the same technique as with IBM. Again, I don't know why companies aren't making these into actual pool floaties because they're really cool. It kind of reminds me of when Taco Bell had the Taco Bell hotel, they made the sauce packets into floaties. And I feel like this is just a perfect opportunity for like a branded event to have their logo be everywhere in the pool. One of the more fun suggestions that someone gave reads as follows. I wanna see a penguin wearing a Hawaiian shirt with a straw hat on and glasses. And to finish off a cup of ice water in one of its hands or wing or whatever it is. I love how specific this one got. And I was worried that it would be a little bit too busy, but just wait, the final result is really cool. Unfortunately, I did forget to hit record on my screen until I'd already drawn the penguin itself and like part of his shirt. But basically what I did is I drew half of his body with the pen tool and then I copied it, reflected it, and then moved it over so it was perfectly symmetrical on both sides. And then using the shape builder tool, I could make those into one shape. And I did that basically with all the shapes on him. I drew these little hibiscus flowers for the shirt based on some references I found. And I mirrored the t-shirt to the other side, placed all the flowers on it. And again, using that divide tool to cut off the excess pieces. I drew his hat, which I simplified a lot since complex shapes don't really work super well on this 3D function. And he was already extremely detailed. Um, but I did give him the sunglasses, played around with the placement there. I made this cup of water with some simple ice cubes in it, placed it by his hand and I cut it off and redrew it so it looked like he was holding it. And when I gave it the 3D look, I was super impressed. I was worried the detail would be gone, but instead I think it is the best one that we made today. So thank you so much for that suggestion. This one inspired me to make another kind of more complex one. Um, I feel like a couple of years ago, it was really trendy to have rafts that looked like food, like a slice of pizza or something like that, um, or like an avocado. So I asked this random word generator to spit out words for me until I got a food. And the first one that it gave me was ham. <laughs> so I decided to draw ham. So I drew it out with the pen tool. And when I made it 3D, it really looks like a pool raft that you would have seen like at Urban Outfitters in 2017. Finally, I exported all of those as PNGs and brought them into Photoshop. I found this pool reflection image on Google, maybe for future ones, I'll try to 
recreate something like this in Photoshop. But for now, this is what I'm using. I put all of them in there and I worked on the placement of them so that they kind of took up the same amount of space in the pool. And then I worked on giving one of them a drop shadow. I wanted to make it really kind of buffed and blurred out and kind of far away from the wrap so that it looked like it was reflecting on the bottom of a pool. I copied that layer style and gave it to all the others, made sure none of those were under the shadows, and here is the final result based on your own suggestions. I think throughout this process, I really learned what types of vectors work best for these. You can really see an improvement from the first one I made of the cat to the final one, I think, and kind of saw as I learned more and more as I went. I think the penguin one has to be my favorite, but honestly, I am really shocked at how much I love the Instagram one too. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And let me know down in the comments which of these objects you liked the best and which ones I should use in future videos.